When Van Cronkite Associates Incorporated, a Chicago-based radio consulting agency, dissolved in 1938, some of its former employees promptly created TransAir Incorporated, another agency focused on building and selling radio programming, especially news and transcribed shows. With William F. Arnold as president, Ray Launder as vice president, and John Taylor Booz as their secretary, TransAir quickly sold its first series to Toledo, Ohio's Hickok Oil Company. That first sale was the Black Flame of the Amazon, a quarter-hour show that Hickok wanted on the Michigan network, as well as stations in Toledo, Cleveland, Canton, and Youngstown, Ohio. Recorded by Aerograms Incorporated out of Hollywood, the Black Flame of the Amazon premiered on February 14, 1938. The program aired five days per week and featured adventurer and explorer Harold Noyce. Noyce had spent the last half of the 19-teens on Arctic exploration trips and spent significant time among the Inuit. He later turned his attention to South America and the Amazon region, the period in which the black flame of the Amazon is very loosely based. Noyce played himself in the series, and the scripts were written and produced by Aerogram's J.B. Downey. After going off the air for the summer, Hickok Oil renewed the Black Flame of the Amazon on September 26, 1938, for a 39-week run to last through the school year. The show's reach expanded to Cincinnati's WCKY and Richmond, Virginia's WRVA. It also ran on other stations in Kentucky, North Carolina, and West Virginia under the sponsorship of Streitman Biscuit Company and Felber Biscuit Company, both subsidiaries of the United Biscuit Company. Promoted as an educational adventure series, the producer created a High Speed Explorers Club after a gasoline brand of the Hickok Oil sponsor. Executives boasted that over 450,000 youngsters joined the Explorers Club after hearing about it on the Black Flame of the Amazon. Information about other sponsors include, in 1940, the Independent Packing Company, backing the program in St. Louis and Jefferson City, Missouri, and in 1941, the Pacific States Oil Company underwriting it over San Francisco's KFRC. Industry records indicate that it was still on the air as late as 1943. For old-time radio researchers, I'm your announcer, Patrick Andre. Enjoy the show!